Have you lost a spark in your marriage or relationship? Do you feel like you're just a brother and sister now? You are not alone. There are so many couples around the world who have allowed familiarity to affect their relationship or marriage. So many people start their relationships on a high and always they're so excited about each other. There's so much spark in their relationship or marriage. But after a few years, they don't feel that spark again. Today on Dear Happily Married for Life, I will be sharing with you how you can get that spark into your relationship or your marriage. All is not yet lost. That spark that you had in the very beginning, you can get it back again if you follow the steps I'm going to share with you. So let's go. The first one is to bring back the romantic gestures. One of the things we usually do when the relationship goes on for a while is that we stop doing the romantic gestures. Sometimes simple things like saying, I miss you, I love you, we choose not to do it. We choose not to do those things again. Those simple things like when your husband came home from work, you go and hug him or you kiss him, those very simple romantic gestures, we tend to stop doing them. Sometimes, even the way we used to call each other in the very beginning, we stop doing that. When you first met, most probably you're calling yourself princess, prince, king, my queen, sweetheart, my lover, my bae, all those things. We stop doing them. It's time to get back to those things. It's so important to restart calling yourself by pet names. Pet names help you rebond again and feel like lovers and not like a brother and a sister living together. Sometimes it even gets so bad that it feels like two tenants sharing a space. That should not be the case. You can get the spark back into your marriage or relationship by first bringing back the romantic gestures that you used to do. Another one is to schedule time alone together. This is so important because usually when people get married and they get kids, the kids come and they're so excited about the kids. What happens is that the woman tends to spend so much time on the kids and the man also focuses on trying to find so much money to take care of the same kids. So what happens is that there is that separation. Everything becomes about work, becomes about childcare. The duties of becoming being a father and a mother tends to supersede the very issue of being a husband and wife. It's very easy to forget that you're husband and wife before you became father and mother. So how you can get it back is that you need to date again. Spend time, go find a restaurant or go to the movies, go out. Things you used to do in the past, start doing them again. Start dating again. Start the things that you used to do, the things you used to enjoy doing when you first met each other. Try doing them again. Some of them you may have matured out of it and you may not find it as exciting as you used to find it. But there are so many other things that are still exciting that you can do. Simple things like going to have dinner, going to have lunch, going to watch a movie, going to a program together, 
It could be a church program. You could go together and enjoy the music together. Schedule time out again. Try to date again. Try to feel like a boyfriend and a girlfriend again. One important thing to do to get the spark back into your marriage is to get the spark back into your life. If you're not excited about your life, and you are frustrated, you can't have an exciting marriage or relationship. So some of the things that are putting you down, that are making you feel frustrated, that are worrying you, you need to deal with them. If you do not deal with them, you will not find excitement to create a happy relationship or marriage. So sometimes the reason why some of us and not happy in the marriage or relationship has nothing to do with your spouse. It's just that you're not happy with your life. And if you don't correct that and take that frustration out of your life, you are actually going to lose your marriage or relationship. So fix it. Deal with the things that are making you frustrated. Sometimes the things that frustrate us are just the desire to have everything in life and we cannot have everything in life. Be content, be happy with God, God has given you and so that you can be your happy self and then you can create a happy relationship or marriage. Third thing you can do to revive the spark in your marriage is to minimize distractions. And one key distractions that you need to work on is electronics. That's the TV and social media. These two things have the ability to take your mind off your marriage or your relationship. If you spend too much time on these two things, you could lose the excitement of even being together. There are so many homes that even the husband and the wife are in at home. It's not like one is away from the home, but both are as in the house, but they are not having fun. They are not talking because both of them are glued to either the television or glued to social media on their phones. That will kill the excitement and you need to get over it. Another thing to do to get the spark back into your marriage or relationship is to clean the cobwebs. Sometimes when we stay together for a while, we tend to build resentment towards each other because of the little, little things we have done to each other. And we don't feel very happy being around each other as we used to. Because some of the things, we haven't really fully dealt with it in our hearts. Sometimes it is important that the two of you sit down and say, do you have anything against me? Is there something that I have done that you still hold on to? Is there something that you haven't fully forgiven me for? Have that conversation so that you can clear all the cobwebs and start again on a clean slate. Because if you don't do that and you hold those little things against each other, you will not find the fun. You will not find that relationship an exciting place. Another thing you need to do is to practice gratitude. So many times we focus on what is not right in our marriage or relationship. The things that are not happening right in our marriage or relationship, the things that your husband is not doing well or your wife is not doing well, or your lover is not doing well. And we forget all the good things that your lover is doing. If you're going to bring back the spark into your marriage, then you need to focus on the good things. And one way of focusing on the good things is sitting down and writing out all the good things about your spouse and letting your spouse get to know that you are happy that these things are in his or her life. These are the good things he does for you. When you start to focus on the positives, 
you will start to find that joy again in the marriage. But whenever you focus on only the negative, sometimes people come for counseling and you tell they tell you all the negative things about your spouse and then you say, is there any positive about your spouse? Then they start to say the good things about your spouse. And as they continue to talk about the good things about your spouse, they realize that their spouses are not as bad as they are talking about. Sometimes we have even asked people, can you list all the good things about your spouse and send to us? And by the time they finish that process, they tell us they think they can work out their own marriage. Just they've realized that their spouse is not as bad as they felt their spouse was. So practice gratitude. Focus on the positives. Focus on the good things about your spouse. And as you focus on those good things about your spouse, you will start to find the joy in your marriage or relationship again. One other thing that you have to do to get the spark back is to cut links with anybody who is sharing your heart with your spouse. If you have some close friend, maybe an ex, maybe somebody that you, you, you are spending so much time with and you are getting hooked on, it would affect your marriage or relationship. Your heart cannot be shared. If you try focusing on somebody else, you're going to lose it here. Jesus told us that where your treasure is, your heart will also be. So immediately you start to invest into a new friendship or relationship, you will start to lose the excitement in the present one. Maybe now you feel, oh, it's just a friend. It's, it's just somebody that I'm spending time with in the office. It, it's not anything. We both know we are married. But that friendship that is getting so strong would start to eat away the joy in your marriage or relationship. So please, cut that relationship so that you can focus all your emotions on your spouse. And through that, you will start to find the joy again. So let's go over the seven things again. First thing is that you need to restart the romantic gestures that you have stopped. If there are any romantic things you used to do that you have stopped, please, it's time to go back to it. The simple things like holding hands when walking, kissing each other, hugging, calling each other with pet names, Get back to those romantic things. Another thing is that you need to schedule time to spend it together alone and enjoy yourselves, maybe for lunch, maybe for dinner. It's also important that you minimize on electronic time. Minimize on the time you spend with a TV. Minimize on the time you spend on your phone, especially when you are together. Also, it is important that you clean the cobwebs. If there are any things that are building resentment in your heart towards your spouse, or your spouse has things that have built resentment in his or her heart towards you, both of you need to sit and talk and get over that resentment. It is also important that each of you work on yourselves to be a happy self. Deal with your frustrations so that you are able to find that joy, to create a joyful environment around you. Another very important thing we talked about is that if there's any other emotional friendship outside that is affecting your present marriage or you're getting close to somebody else other than the person that you are dating or you're in relationship with, you should know it would affect your present relationship. So it's necessary that you focus. The last thing also is that you need to focus on the positives. Don't drench yourself in the negatives. Don't be only focused on what is not working in your marriage or relationship. Focus also on what is working. Spend time to think about and celebrate what is working.
If you have to write it, sit down and write it out and let your spouse know. Let your spouse know these are the good things you are doing for me and I'm very happy about it. And you'll be amazed when you start to do these things, you will start to realize that the spark will start to return into your marriage or relationship. I hope we've been of help to you. This has been another episode of a Dear Happily Married for Life. Until we meet again, be happily married for life. God bless you. Thank you.